Did someone say winter vacation? Woo! Hey guys, Melissa here. I am wearing a very appropriate shirt today, push through the pain. I have had to do that all week. Uh, P.S. One of my original designs, so if you want to check out my Etsy shop, Just Move Activewear, I'll put that in the link down below. Uh, but it has been a heck of a week. I have learned a lot more. I got my test results. So we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but I continued to push my body through physical things I didn't think I could do, but I did it. So I'm just proud of myself besides the test. I am proud of myself. Oh, what a week. Uh, yeah, let's talk about this test first. It was a 60 question test. We had an hour to complete it, so about a minute per question. I studied my tush off. It was on Wednesday, so uh, Monday, like through work in between calls. I was looking at my, my flashcards. I would study for about half an hour to an hour in bed right before I went to sleep. So here is my score. Yeah, I got to see not my best work, but if the school wanted to round to my convenience, I'm only two points away from a B. Just throwing that out there. But alas, that is not how life works. So I'll take my C in stride and I know what I need to work on. I still need to work on those darn muscles and which ones move when you move. You know, which ones are doing the work. And then you've got the agonist, the antagonist, the synergist muscle, depending on what exercise you do, that threw me off. I didn't remember anything I read about that during the test. So I know where the fault lies. I know what to do next time. I score to C. As far as what I learned this week in my practical and my theory classes, it was very mathematical. Extremely mathematical. We went through the uh, BMI, your body mass indicator, uh, which is not that accurate. So we would rather rely on the body. I know I've got it in one of my little notebooks right here. Uh, the body fat analysis. Now, in order to do this, I would have to get one of these right here. I found one on Amazon for less than five bucks, uh, but it is a body fat caliper. And what you have to do is there, there are specific points of the body, like your bicep, your tricep, your in a, in a something. Do I have an ilia crest? Thank you notes. So you would also do your ilia crest, which is your belly button over right near your side. And then your scapula at an angle. Uh, you would take all those, add them up and then do some math to find your body fat number to see if you really are overweight, underweight, obese, normal, much better than relying on just your BMI. Because I don't own a caliper, I was not prepared for uh, that day's lesson. I was able to follow along with a couple of people um, via Zoom on the computer so I could input someone else's numbers. So with the uh, woman we were working on, she was 145 pounds with the calculations we did with all of her measurements, which came up to 25 millimeters when we use those four um, points of the body and add them up. And then we took her body weight, multiplied it by 15% and we found out that her body mass, just the fat portion was 27, sorry, 21.7 pounds. Doing that, we can now determine that her lean body mass, and this is going to be your, your muscles, your skeleton, your organs. And my husband and I, we were just talking about that a couple months ago. He has a large skeleton. And he, he's a, I wouldn't call him big. I'd call him like husky. I, I don't know. What's the right term to use? He's handsome, if that counts. But when he was weighing himself, he wanted to know how much of himself was a skeleton. Now I can find out. So once he's back from picking up our youngest to come down uh, to Florida for Christmas, yeah, I'm gonna try this math out on him. We'll find out. Another really neat thing we went over in my theory class, mathematically, everything was math, I swear to you. 
Oh, if my elementary teachers had told me that I would need math for uh, food to make uh, recipes for, I wouldn't say bill paying because I wouldn't care about that as a 10, 12 year old, but uh, money, just say money and exercise. Maybe I would have paid a little more attention. I was always, what is it, left brain is artistic or is it right? Shoot. I was not prepared for this part of my video. You'll let me know in the comments. I'm the one that's not mathematical. <laughs> when writing programs for clients, we need to determine that client's specific maximum heart rate. So to do that, there are two methods, but my professor prefers the Carvonin method. Not only is it easier to do, but it seems like it's a little more precise. So that's what we did. And I've got my, when I say I have multiple books, I think I've got one more over there and my note cards. It's everywhere. They're everywhere. In order to use the Carvonin method, you need two things. You need your age, easy enough, and you need your resting heart rate. I wear a Fitbit morning, noon, and night, unless it's charging or I'm cleaning it. So it knows my resting heart rate. I've been using it for 10 months now, so it's figured it out, and I am on average at 75 which has gone down since I started to lose weight. I think it was at 85, 89. So that's an amazing thing right there. Uh, and let me scoot over so I can show you the math right here. Carbonin formula for maximum heart rate. Um, yeah, but you'll need the maximum heart rate so you know where the client can be. You don't wanna push them past their max HR. Does that make sense? Uh, so you're going to take 220. Now this is a constant. doesn't matter who you are, what you're doing. You will always use that 220 number. You're going to subtract your age. So I would subtract 38. And that gave me a maximum heart rate of 182, which I hit a couple times this week. Yeah, it was intense. But I'm feeling stronger because of it. Now you need to find your um, heart rate reserve. So you're gonna take your maximum heart rate, for me that's 182. You subtract your resting heart rate, so for me that would be 75, and I came out to 107 for my heart rate reserve. Now, to find out what your heart rate needs to be at for the intensity percentage of the exercise, you're gonna take your heart rate reserve, multiply it by the intensity. So um, if we wanted to do a 60%, you'll multiply by 0.6 and you'll add your resting heart rate. So what I'm doing is taking that 107, multiply it by 0.6 for 60%, and then I'm going to add 75. So I came out to 139. If I wanna go 60% intensity on something, my heart rate needs to be at or right around 139. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So I can take this screenshot from Fitbit, see my average heart rate during the workout, and determine what percentage intensity I was giving during that workout. It's awesome. Yeah, you can use it forward or backward. You know, how intense do you want to be or how intense were you during that exercise? And then going back to the practical class, we were using math there as well because this week we got to write our own exercise programs. That was exciting. So we were given um, you know, certain things we had to meet. It was gonna be a 30 minute exercise and I'll show you right here what I did. So with a 30 minute exercise, I knew I wanted five minutes for my um, warm up, five minutes for my cool down, that left 20 minutes for me to write an exercise. And it's a phase one exercise, so we know we're gonna be concentrating on stabilization. I chose four moves, that way I covered the shoulders, chest, legs, and back. So it's a full body workout, but now how do I determine how I get those four moves to last 20 minutes so that we had an overall 30 minute workout? Yay math. So I've got my flashcard for the phase one program and here is what it needs to be around. So I know for my reps, I've got to choose between 20, sorry, 12 and 20. So the reps, are a lot more than the other programs. The sets are gonna be a little less, one to three. My intensity level has to be 50 to 70, so we know how to calculate that now. And the rest in between um, the workouts, it's gonna be zero to 90 seconds. The tempo 
is 421. So we take all this information to determine how long each move is going to take. So with a tempo 421, this means uh, the four, the very first number, is your eccentric. <laughs> I'm learning a little bit. Uh, let's, let's use a bicep curl, for instance, right? Because everyone knows how to do that. It's pretty easy. Your bicep, when it is stretched, is an eccentric move. When it is shorter while you're working out, that's your concentric move. So the first number is eccentric. That means when we're going down. This motion, this eccentric motion, has to last four seconds. And then that second number, number two, that's your pause at the end of your eccentric move. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, and then the last number is your concentric. That's when the muscle's gonna shorten. That's usually the harder one to do. So that's one second. That means you're gonna pump it right back up in a one count. So one, two, three, four, one, two, one. It's awesome. I'm, I'm learning something. I'm grasping the, the physical part of it more than I am the, the book smart stuff. So I still have a lot, a lot of reading, a lot of material to take in, to memorize, to learn, to, if I use it, if I'm able to physically use it on me, on someone, because my son's going to be my, my guinea pig when he arrives, he's going to help me out with a few things. I think it'll be easier to understand long-term, you know, because with the exercises, I'm able to do it. That means I'm able to remember it. So hopefully... Hopefully I'll make better grades on future exams. So here's what I came up with. And I, I know I showed the photo earlier, but just so you can see again, this is what we're looking at right here. So this is the math I did to determine a 20 minute workout and I came really close. We have to do 16 reps twice. So 16 reps, two sets. Um, I chose a 70% intensity just because I really wanna concentrate on the core, but I don't wanna overdo it. So <clears throat> the tempo, 421, that doesn't change. That is per program. So that's what, seven, four, yeah, seven seconds right there. Um, so we multiply that by the 16 reps, and then we multiply that by two, we, we, we're getting there. But you also have your rest in between your workouts. <clears throat> Sorry, I guess I'm a little thirsty. I went through my water a few minutes ago. I'll have to get some more in a second. Uh, so I added a 30 second rest, but you have to multiply that by four because I've got the four different exercises. So you add that all together, 19 minutes, 70 seconds, 70 seconds. So I guess that would be 20 minutes, 10 seconds. I wasn't even thinking when I wrote that down. <laughs> the exercises we had to choose from were not um, Zoomer friendly because we don't have a lot of the equipment, the ones learning virtually. So for the, um, the chest, the legs, and the shoulders, you needed a physio ball and a BOSU ball. So basically the really big one and the half one. I don't have those yet. They're in my Amazon wish list. One day. Uh, but the back, I chose one of the exercises that did not require equipment. So what I'm going to do is uh, that back exercise so I can show you the tempo again and how I figured it out. And then, and then it will be time to try sit-ups again. So, or <laughs> sit-ups, no, no, no. We're going to try push-ups. I told you I'd try in every video just to see how I am improving with my upper arm strength because that's where I struggle the most. I mean, you see this. Oh, but let me tell you, in our class, in another one of my notebooks here somewhere, um, we went through... The, that's not it. I have so many notes. Come on now, this was just yesterday. Found it. It was the body composition. So thanks dad for my tape measure because I was able to use it in class yesterday to find all of my measurements. Now, I knew most of them. I had done my measurements months ago. Uh, it would have been right before we moved to Florida. So about a year, about a year ago, because I was trying to um, determine like a starting point if I wanted to start losing weight again. And that didn't happen for another few months, but I had my measurements. And I know that my arm, well, specifically this one, was 21 inches around. 
Do you see how that moves now? Yeah, I'm losing a lot of fat right there. Oh, I'm getting there. Certain angle, you see that, um, what's it called? The shadow. Oh, my brain is fried. But yeah, that shadow right there. So I've got a little bit more definition right here. It's coming down, creating that shadow. Uh, but my arms were 21 inches. They are now 19. I have lost two inches off of each one of my arms. Yes. Yes. All right, exercise. Uh, we are going to do rear delt, delt flies. <laughs> so we're concentrating on the deltoids, the, the shoulders. Rear means they're going back. And to make it a stabilization exercise, we're doing it on one leg. Here we go. All right, got my weights. I'm gonna get into position. So you're basically, you know, kind of straight. You're going to move your hips back a little. That will make your knees bend. Set your shoulders, engage your core. And now we're gonna take these weights and they go up like this and then back down. But we know our tempo is four, two, one. So we need to figure out which move is eccentric, which one's concentric. We're working on the shoulders. So get into position here. When the weights come up, the shoulder muscles get smaller. So that means this is our concentric move when we go up. So eccentric coming down needs to be four seconds. So we'll do one, two, oh, and on a single leg. Yeah, because I love this, right? So on one leg, really engage those core muscles. All right. So we'll start here. One, two, three, four, rest one, two, and then back up on one. One, two, three, four, one, two, one. Oh, I feel it in my shoulders, definitely in my stomach and in my, definitely my calves. I don't really feel it in my quads or my hamstrings. Let me try the other leg and I'll, I'll concentrate more on what I feel in the leg, but the abs, yeah, it's a killer. All right, single leg. Oh, maybe, maybe. Set shoulders, engage core. One, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, one, two, three, four, one, two, one. Yeah, quads. These puppies, right here. <laughs> All right, let's set up for uh, some push-ups. Okay. <sighs> I mean, I know my arms are smaller fat-wise, but I don't know if they're bigger muscle-wise yet or not. I'm gonna try to do a regular and then I'll go into the modified. Wish me luck. All right, so I want them shoulder width. Right about there. <laughs> I just can't go all the way down. Oh, that's as close as I'm going to get. <sighs> One day. Hopefully soon. All right, let's do the modified ones here. You know, when I look on camera, it doesn't look like I'm getting down low enough. Maybe my core is not really engaged. My, uh, my stomach starts hitting the mat and I'm here. I know my shirt's a little big. Oh. And <laughs> girl in class said I need to get gloves. My hands get sweaty after a workout and I just start sliding on the mat. So that's what I'm dealing with now, trying to find the right arm placement, hand placement without sliding. All right. Yeah, it's still like my stomach hits here. Oh, my arms. 
All right, engage the core. Well, I'm gonna keep working out throughout the winter break, specifically with walking and jogging because being outside, feeling the sunshine on my shoulders, just the wind going by, yeah, that is something to live for. It is amazing just to be outdoors. So, um, I'll probably do some strength exercises. I've got my posters on the wall with some uh, body weight and dumbbell moves, so I'll try those. And I also still have my Nintendo boxing game, Laugh All You Want. It is a workout, yeah. <laughs> So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy your winter breaks as well. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate, do it with joy and love. And I will see you guys next time. Take care.